ready? Y'all get ready? Yes, you get ready. ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your teacups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. you guys good morning i hope you guys are doing good so i wanted to come out here and talk about some more things that were going on i kind of low-key touched on it yesterday during the live stream um if you guys do not know diddy has been trending off and on all week because making the band clips have been going viral once again on twitter it's like all of these old shows are going viral again with this generation because a lot of them were babies when these shows aired and because we live in a different culture now where people are more sensitive and more aware of, you know, mental health and negative impacts, people have been calling Diddy out for how he treated members of the band, making the band. Um, those were two different shows. We had with making of the band, you had Danity Kane, which was the girl group. And then you had the uh, boy group Day 26. And then you had the band, which was the rap hip hop group. So Diddy had three of these shows going on way back in the mid 2000s. And I remember I watched every single damn episode. I was married at the time. We were young in our 20s. Me and my ex-husband, we were big fans of the show. Um, I mean, there was even a point in time where my ex was like, I want to be on the show, you know, because he used to dabble in music and shit back then. And, you know, when you're young, you just want an opportunity. You just want an opportunity to be heard, you know, and... Now that we're grown and we're looking at this show with a fresh set of eyes, which is adult eyes, you know, because when you're in your early 20s, you're still you're still young. You're still trying to figure out life. And all of these people on these shows were between the ages of 18 because you have to be a minimum of 18. They're be between the ages of 18 and 25, you know, and so looking back at how much he took advantage of all of these people is very worrisome and bothering to me. And I've spoken out about Diddy for years. And I know a lot of the newer generation, they don't get it. They think I'm a hater. They think I'm mean. I've had people say, I'm going to unfollow you because I don't understand your beef with Diddy. But like I've explained over the years, y'all just got here. Understand. And I'm not saying it to be disrespectful because I have kids y'all's age. But y'all just got here. Just like I explained to my kids, y'all know brother love and all this, oh, kundalini energy and positivity and all that bullshit. So my new name is Love, a.k.a. Brother Love. I will not be answering the Puffy, Diddy, Puff Daddy, or any of my other monikers, but love or brother love, okay? It's my birthday. I feel good. God is the greatest. I give all glory, and I thank my mama and daddy. Mwah! We know the Diddy from the 90s who literally fucked over so many people. So for me, because I grew up watching not only this making the band reality television, but we're talking about Craig Mack, Black Rob, Total. It was so many people that Diddy just used, sucked their energy, sucked their soul and spit them out. You know what I'm saying? And it's sad because these people are so talented and they do not get the shine and the recognition that they deserve. Like I said a few years ago, why are you not paying Mace and all these artists the money that they deserve and they're asking for? You know, it's, it's just a shame. But unfortunately, this generation, they just don't understand where a lot of us, you know, who are in our late 30s and 40s are coming from when it comes to Diddy. We're just not... Dick writers of him. We respect the fact that he's been able to make himself a multimillionaire. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, he changed the game in his own way. But he used a lot of people and stepped on a lot of people to get to where he's at today. And I just don't respect it, especially when I go back and I watch clips from shows like Making of the Band. And you see how these teenagers and these young people were literally exploited. You know, they just wanted a chance to be heard. They were all extremely talented, okay? And they just wanted, you know, a, you know, a helping hand from somebody that they thought was being genuine to them. And to this day, you barely really see anything from any of them. No one has really blown up from any of these franchises besides Diddy. I mean, Willie, he's on reality television. He was on Love & Hip Hop for a while. Now he's not doing that. I know... Uh, 
Elliot Ness, he was doing some rap battles. Babs got really big in the rap battle scene. I don't know whatever happened to Sarah. I know Choppa rapped for a little bit and then he fell off. But Freddie P was one of the most talented rappers on that show. And when he left, we really didn't hear too much from him. Um, Dylan Dillinger, you know, the, the, the Caribbean guy on the show, we all love Dylan. He brought his own little style and swag. And it's just really sad that none of these people's careers were able to really expand and flourish. You know, even Danity Kane. I mean, look at Audrey. Like, she looks like she's just been to, to hell and back. And I'm not even talking about the things that she's chosen to do to her body because that's her choice. But it looks like, you know, she went that route because of so many things that she's fighting in the background. We haven't heard anything from Andrea. You might see D Woods every now and then. Don did end up re-signing with Diddy and she ended up being a part of the group Dirty Money with Kalina. And we all remember Kalina from Living Hip Hop, but since then I haven't really seen Don or Kalina. Um it's just it's sad because you don't understand until, like I said, you get older years later and you really hear these people's stories and understand what they really went through. So, you know, for us being young, we're looking at it like this is a life. Oh, my gosh, they're so lucky. They're on this show. They're getting all this fame. They're getting fed. They don't have to worry about, you know, where they're going to get their next meal and their clothes and they have hairstylists. And and at the end of the day, it's just a TV show. And when these people have to go back to their real life, after being used and spit up, it really fucks with people mentally. So a few of these members are speaking out. Um, one of them that spoke out recently was Willie Taylor. And Willie Taylor was in day 26. And this is what he had to say about the making the band situation because it started trending again. So basically one of the scenes that went viral is when Diddy had all of the boy singers literally come up against each other and like sing. And these dudes were blowing. You see Brian and, you know, they're just getting it. And Diddy would do that. He would play these weird mind games with the contestants all the time. It was always a you versus them. Hey, sing, sing to him. Don't sing the song no Let him hear you. I don't know you coming to get his bed, man. I don't know you coming to get his bed, man. Acting so strange, yeah, yeah. And he's pretty good. It kind of shakes me up a little bit. Girl, at least I'm a try. I just break down and cry. Although we go. And so Willie took to social media, and this is what he said. He says, a learning experience. You got to understand that people will do whatever you allow them. So don't let your passion drive you in the wrong destination. Hashtag making the band for day 26 slash Danny D. Kane. Our talented groups, but the situation in which we were met was designed to fail Hashtag the band, hashtag Danny DeCane, hashtag day 26, hashtag Donnie Clan. Because even Donnie, the white boy, ended up getting a solo deal and nothing came of that. So the whole situation is really sad. And so people are really like dragging Diddy for this. And so yesterday, Freddie P, which was one of my favorite, you know, people on the show. I loved him. I love Sarah. I love Babs. You know, they all had like a really dope backstory. I remember even and Dylan Dillinger, like he was also one of my favorites. And I remember, you know, Freddie always felt low key like he was being played. And because the rest of the group wanted it so bad, he was always made to look like the problem child. Like, dude, just go along with it. Just sign your contract. Just do this. And Freddie was always kind of like the holdout. But then he would eventually get pressured by the group to go through with it. And one of the things that was just really discouraging when I go back and I watch that cheesecake scene. And I remember me and my ex-husband watching that at like, we're probably like 23, 24 at the time. And we're in shock. You know, and I don't even know how far from Manhattan is to Brooklyn. But we figured, you know, using where we lived at the time, we were living in Charlotte. We're like, well, that has to be like walking to Pineville or something. And it was just insane because it's like, what was the point of this? And I remember them finally getting to Junior's after this two hour walk and it was closed. It wasn't even open. And that was such a slap in the face. And I remember we we're just watching this like. I mean, I get it. Like, you know, they want to be a part of the band and they want to make it. 
But even to us back then as young people, we thought it was a bit over the top. Like you're literally making them walk hours to get you cheesecake. It's like you're low key trying to punk them, but it made for good reality television. You know, everybody talked about that. Like that was like talked about for years. Diddy making the band walk to Brooklyn to get cheesecake. And I remember in that scene, Freddie was like really pissed off about it. He was really upset. Like, fuck this. This is not cool. But again, the band was always feeling like, come on, we're, you know, we just got to go through this. We're going to make it. We're going to make it big. So I want y'all to watch that clip really quick. I got to get up every day and do a bunch of that I don't want to do. I got to bite my tongue and I got to do it with a smile on my face. <laughs> but I do want some cheesecake. So I'll see y'all in a little while. Take your time. Enjoy it. You ain't really got nothing else to do. Fred, you all right? Fred, yeah, yeah. You all right? Fred, I'm good. This dude must be crazy. Sooner or later, we gonna trash. The word is funny. My cheesecake, my cheesecake is in the least bit soft or brittle or not on point. Your will go back. Somebody gonna quit. Somebody ain't got the heart, the stamina to be bad boy. Somebody ain't got the passion, the drive, the intensity to want it. Somebody's mental capacity breaks at a certain point. Puffy just told us to go to the store in Brooklyn and bring him back a cheesecake and walk. Cheesecake, what? Yeah. See me on TV. It ain't no more discuss, discussion. Stick with your group. It's all good. I appreciate that. Y'all gotta find a deal somewhere else. It goes in your way. So the ego made the decision, especially with a like you, when I help get your ass out of a situation and you looking at me in my face telling me you ain't gonna do something. I can see if I told you to go rob a bank. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm doing some I'm gonna go get some cheesecake. You got that much ego? Go do your thing, man. Don't sit here and be talking about it, man. Be fly about it, Get your swag on, walk that way. Your is that way, do it. If you wanna think about it, or if you ain't gonna walk that way, walk to Brooklyn and be happy about it. Fred! Hello! Fred! Y'all got me I'm gonna tell you, man. My heart Ooh, man, that man. That's it. Come on, man. All right, so you guys just saw that clip. So now, yesterday, Freddie P took to his Instagram page and he went on a 14 minute, I'm not gonna call it a rant. It was, I mean, he went through 14 minutes of emotions. I'll call it that. It was an emotional roller coaster. It even had me drop in tears watching this because, like I said, he was one of my favorite people on the show. And he really went through it. And I never looked at it from their perspective that. You get all of this fame because they were recognized worldwide. Like this was a huge phenomenon back then. You know, I don't even know what to compare it to, you know, today. But this was a huge phenomenon. So much so that Kanye even talked about it on his song Through the Wire. You make a man story on MTV and I ain't trying to make a band. I, I remember Dave Chappelle even doing comedy skits about the band and, you know, Dylan Dillinger, you know, all that stuff. So this was like a huge cultural phenomenon. But I never realized that. These young people, literally kids, really did not get anything beneficial. They didn't go on to get good deals. They weren't even able to sign with new labels and get other opportunities because they were simply seen as the joke of the industry. They were literally used for reality TV fodder. Diddy made, I think he said, $40 million per um, season. So with all three, he made $40 million a piece. These kids never even split a million between them. When you talk about exploitation going on in the mid 2000s, you can't talk about it without bringing up Diddy and even Tyra Banks, America's Next Top Model. As much as I love her, looking back at a lot of those shows, there was a lot of exploitation going on. And it's easy to demonize these kids and say, well, you know what? Y'all should have known better. It is what it is. Everybody's not going to pop. But why are we always so quick to dismiss the people who come onto these shows? These are people coming from the hood, the projects, the trailer park. Some of the most raw talent are found in like just the most desolate, destitute areas. Because when you have nothing else going and nothing else to really live for, 
All you can do is home into those talents. That's why they go to the ghetto. That's why they go to the trailer park. That's why they go to a lot of these low income places to look for talent. Because not only do these people have natural raw talent, because they don't have access to really auto tune their voice and, you know, have a, a team of songwriters and ghostwriters. Everything that they're doing, they're getting it from the mud. And a lot of these execs and big name people in the industry, they go to these places to gather these people because they know that one, they're hungry. They just want a chance to take care of themselves, take care of their families. And they know that they don't understand the business. They don't understand the game. And that's the part that's messed up. And, you know, I, I just my heart broke watching Freddie tell his story saying that he'd rather be dead. He contemplates his, the S word literally every other day. And that, you know, it got so bad because he got so famous, but, you, but you're not getting any money from this show. You just have the fame that he can't even take care of his family and go work a legal job. Because as soon as he goes to apply for something, you're Freddie P. And then, you know, what, what we do as human beings is why are you here? You should be rich. I saw you on TV. And that's not the case. So he had to turn to the streets because he didn't want to keep getting all that shaming and questioning from strangers as to why he's here at this local business doing X, Y, and Z. So this whole situation is sad. I'm going to go ahead and play you guys the video. Like I said, it's about 14 minutes. I think it's important to get his full story out there. So go ahead and check this out. See, a lot of people don't understand what I've been through. This year alone, I don't contemplate suicide two or three times. I done pictured my brother walking in, finding me dead. I cried a few times thinking about leaving my son because you just get tired of life. It's like no matter what you try to do, you just gotta keep battling. Niggas got their foot on your neck, niggas wanna see you fall. And it be niggas, you know what I'm saying, like, it's this nigga Puffy. And my main motherfucking reason why I really hate fucking life, dog. Like, people don't even understand. Like, I don't even give a fuck. But I've never been to a point where I've thought of suicide my whole life. Never. I think I'm a gangster. You know, I, 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 you know, I partake in my shelf, street things that might occur. I, I apologize for my sins every night. But me personally, my own life, the thought alone, I was telling my dog, I'm like, I don't even know how I start thinking like that. Because I don't, it done got so bad where well, I done had it all and done fell to the bottom. How do you come back from that when, when you battling a giant? It's like no matter what you do, it ain't got nothing to do with your skill no more because your skill is 90% better than any nigga that's out there right now. And the world knows it. But it ain't your skill because you can't even, you can't even get where you're going because of the world is built on relationships. So if a nigga fuck with you, that's saying they don't fuck with Diddy. That, 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 that's, that's basically Cali, Ross, all them niggas chose. You think I don't know them niggas? Them niggas ain't never gave me a verse. Them niggas ain't never did. Not when I first seen Ross, man, after that shit, niggas said, man, I love you, man. You know what you did for our city? I love you, man. In the middle of the club, my nigga. Nigga ain't never gave me, you know, nigga ain't never called back and say, hey, man, like real niggas spoke to me. Every artist in Miami look out for each other. You ever seen any one nigga do anything for me? Them niggas got they deal on the strength of me, man. Khaled them and, and, and Diddy relationship is built off me, man. That's why them niggas don't fuck with me. That's why they can't fuck with me. Them niggas love, I had love, man. I was the only nigga screaming Khaled name when he wasn't shit, bro. Every city too. Every radio station, every every event. Khaled the number one DJ with me, nigga. Cause I'm a real nigga like that. Ross was my favorite rapper before he ever fucking touched the Diddy hand. But notice how after the band, Diddy put his hands on them niggas a few months later. Oh, he wanna be they because he wanna, that was a spit in my face because me and him know what happened. Me and him had the conversation inside the office. I know what we're supposed to take them. Uh, I just don't come from where I can be purchased, man. I ain't come from that, man. I came from, man, sleeping on dirty clothes, man. I used to fill up my clothes. We used to sleep on fucking pillowcases, man. I used to wear my, my fucking... We used to wash our clothes out, hang them bitches in the bathroom, go to school, mildew, my nigga. So I can't be purchased, bro. 
I've been through a lot. My family been through a lot, bro. For 20 years, man, it's like, and people are like, oh, why you ain't, why you ain't, why? Because, bro, anybody that signed me, basically, I don't, I can't pr prove that this nigga hating on me, but I can see through my peers' actions how a nigga like Khaled can't even fuck with me. He can't even, if he want to. And I'll ask you after that, just say, oh, damn, Khaled, when we got beef? Damn, Ricky, when we got, why you cutting checks to all these other niggas? You ain't now, man, and now what all this Ricky Ross ever signed fuck with me, man. I went through 40,000, man. Ain't now nigga Ricky signed that can go through 40,000, man. Ain't now nigga Kanye signed that can run through 40,000. Ain't now nigga, none of these niggas ever signed that can run through 40,000, man. And be noticed. By a nigga who sold 80 million records. You can't take away what we done already. I done been through a lot, dog. And after some time, you just get tired, bro. You just get tired. I had to find more reasons to live this shit. I want step kids or something, dog. Cause my son grown. And, I, and, and seeing him happy, I'm seeing him be successful is the last thing I want on earth. Y'all niggas don't know I, I, I contemplated suicide cause I love God. I'm tired of this shit. I'm tired of earth, man. I want somebody to take my life, bro. I ask God to take my life, bro. I don't want to do it. Because there's shit that nigga been through. I step on shit. No problem. I told my son the other day, I said, you know how, how good I feel knowing you don't have to come up in a life where you got to pray for your sins. Boy, you, you don't have to worry about it. I said, dog, I've been through a lot. I've been praying for my forgiveness for my whole life. I don't know no other way. I don't know what it feels to be a good citizen. I don't know that shit, dog. I never had that money. For 13, we've been providing on our own, dog. Big gangsters. My nigga, my whole, my, my mama's kids. We ain't had no daddies at all. All that shit y'all niggas got. We ain't got all that money. And my big brothers is my daddy, dog. And we learned along the way. So I came up in a life where shooting is normal, robbing is normal. That's not my son will have to go through that. He could be a citizen. He could do, he could go do anything in this world. He be a pilot. My fucking son could be a pilot, nigga. I think I give a fuck about these niggas. It ain't even about money no more. This shit ain't even about money, gang. Cause can't no money make me happy. Nigga, my dog asked me the other day. He like, what'll make you happy, bro? I'm like, I don't even know, man. It's just, I like doing for people. I just like to be able to, to be there for, I just love to be there for people. That's what, that's what made me happy from day one. I, that's why I even did it, man. I don't give a fuck about no music, man. God gave me this talent. This talent is given, bro. You can't take that from me, bro. I do this shit. This shit y'all work hard on, I do in two minutes, man. Two minutes. It take a lot to do this video. I don't even know if I'm gonna release it, but I need to do some my sanity. I had to just break away and talk to myself real quick. But people don't know what a nigga been through to be at, at your highest peak and have it snatched away from you because you don't want to kiss ass. And man, we all black people, man. Black people continue to step on each other and hold each other down. And that shit, that shit for people mental. I'm a nigga that'll run in there and blow your shit loose, bro. I don't give a fuck. Do you really want to be in a situation where you make a man that mad, dog? Well, you take it from a man's family where I gotta sell dope for 20 years and survive in these streets and still don't have a felony, my nigga. I don't have my, my freedom almost taken away from me several times, dog. You hear me? I'm trying to survive, my nigga. You can't go get no job. You just wanna be regular sometimes. You can't even go get a job. You walk in the job. Hey, it's Freddie P. What's up, boy? You gotta back up out of what the fuck. You can't even be a regular human no more after some shit like that. But he don't know nothing about that because he don't come from this shit. He don't come from this shit for real. Niggas like that don't come from this shit. Niggas like that don't think about all about hurting and getting gain, 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 power, 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 power. Niggas gonna die horribly, man. You niggas gonna die horribly. Test the cancer something, man. God gonna get you, niggas, man. Because you fuck with God hard, man. You got a nigga like me who don't even care about no money. I would've did way more for my city than even any one of these niggas did. Cause I'm from Liberty City, I'm from Overtime. Them niggas just shoot videos though. 
Them niggas ain't never did shit for Gibson Paul, William Paul. Them niggas ain't never built no homes for the homeless. Them niggas ain't did nothing I would have did. Them niggas exploited my city, they exploited the culture. Y'all don't know what I'm just telling y'all, man. Be mindful, dog. Appreciate what you what you got, man. But I ain't it's you're not God, bro. When God put you on a mission to change people's lives, you do what he asks you to do. And you'll be rewarded. A nigga at 900 million, nigga, you still at nine. Kanye done passed you. Jay done passed you. Cause they don't practice bad business like that. They ain't stepping on each other to get where they gotta go. Nigga, you look at Jay-Z, nigga, Jay, nigga, Dane made millions, Bean made millions. Nigga, all them niggas around them made real money. Nigga, you ain't made a hundred, two hundred thousand with you, nigga. But you done made over 60, 70 million off, 70 million off us, nigga. And we ain't make two hundred thousand a piece off you, nigga. Listen, man. I just want to tell y'all, this music industry ain't what it seems. I got people in this music industry right now that won't fuck with me. And I was cool with them. They won't fuck with me because of that nigga. Because fuck with me, me and you won't fuck with that nigga. He take it personal. He want to shut doors. So they don't want to have nothing to do with that. And I don't blame him. I blame that nigga. Tell you, man. I done been this. I just had a, I had to talk to Dylan. I tell my brother what I was going through. My brother, I had to talk to Sean. Sean, Terry, the real people that's up under me know what I, this shit, they know I love, I'm, a, I'm fascinated with them. I'm ready for the next journey. When you go through what that nigga put, put a nigga through for the last 20 years, you get tired, bro. You just tired. You, 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 you come, you grow hate. It's like a cancer. It's like, nigga, what, 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 what type of nigga is you? I want to leave this here in case I ever fucking perish, my nigga. You could look back at this, dog. You die before me, dog. How you think I'm going to feel? You think I'm going to laugh? Or you think I'm going to cry? When you die, people pull the cry about you, dog. This world going to talk bad about you, brother. This world gonna exploit every bad thing. How you got every bad dollar? Your legacy is fucked, man. And you don't even go back and try to make it right, my nigga. Cause that shit not in you. Y'all niggas be worried about what's on you, not what's in you. That's the difference between everybody in y'all generation and my generation. That's the, the fuck generations, period. You niggas that's built for money only worry about what's on you. Yeah, I've been through it. I just sometimes, I just want to get away from the world and go get me a great job paying. I ain't got no felonies, man. I could have been anything, man. My whole family in law enforcement. me. I could have been a CSI. I could have been anything, man. But you put me on a pedestal to where I could be a world failure. If, if I don't succeed in music, anything else in this world, you get publicly humiliated. Publicly humiliated. So I got to sell dope. I got to do what I got to do to stay relevant for 20 years to make sure my son has because I can't go get it. I got to do this shit. I don't want to do that shit. Nobody survived this long in that shit. I did, nigga. Not halfway either. Ask him. I step on shit for real. Ask him. That ain't shit to brag about. You know why I did that? To protect my family. I did that so the streets know if you touch this family, because I ain't have that protection growing up, dog. Ain't nobody. All I have my brother Trigger and foot. I ain't have no uncles that was known for this shit. My nephew uncles known for this shit. Y'all play with them, you know what's coming with this shit. And that's why I did it. That's why when I left high school, I said, you know what? I'm going to make sure no nigga play with my fucking family no more, nigga. When I get older, nigga gonna know not to touch my son. When I get older, niggas gonna know not to pill my fucking nephew. These niggas live in fairy tale, all that 20 grand, get your brand new pent to the ceiling, man. It was 10, nigga. You know what's up with me, man. Yeah. Shit came from the count. You know what's up. You know how we rockin', man. 
we the nigga this shit. Y'all niggas out here with all this fairy tale shit. Easy kissing that. Y'all done got rich off a nigga name. Ain't throw, but come back and throw a nigga a dollar. Got rich off a nigga because a nigga hated me so much. He went and, he went and shared the light to y'all. Because I walked away from his plan. So he went and gave it to y'all. And y'all in return, y'all niggas won't even fuck with me because y'all want to be so down with that nigga. I don't fuck with none of them niggas, man. I don't got no respect for none of them, dog. All I tell them, you see me, you got power with me, say it, nigga, so we can shoot that shit out. Don't do none of that sneaky shit. Don't send no fuck nigga my way. Say it, man. Shoot me in my face, too, dog. Don't, don't play with me, my nigga. Shoot me in my face. Do not resuscitate, man. That's how I'm living. Send me my God, dog. Send me to my mama, my brother, my nigga. Do not resuscitate. Y'all ain't living like that, dog. If y'all really living like that, man, don't want all that y'all want to side of me. Cause y'all know I'm real, y'all know I'm real in every, everything y'all ever touched, everything y'all ever been around. Nigga, shoot me in my face, send your killer to me in my But let me know what's on first so I can give you what you want, my nigga. I'm gonna be the one give you what you want. You play with me, dog. I'm gonna fuck with you who you is. And that's on my mama's soul. You niggas be doing all this whole ass shit, man. I don't respect none of them, man. I got love for them because I understand they had to do what they had to do. All that. Man, y'all niggas got rich off a of nigga, man. Off my back, my nigga. That friend nigga wasn't fucking with y'all. That nigga ain't never shake your hand before that. Until after that situation with me. He came straight down and fucked with them niggas. Gave them niggas deals, put them niggas on everything, man. Big guy, stop playing with me, man. All right, so you guys just watched that video, and it's extremely sad, you know. And he's right, money is not everything, you know, but it definitely helps. And it just shows you that some people will literally sell their souls and manipulate and, you know, and be master manipulators just to try and get a bag, just to get to the next level. They will step on anyone. And he definitely blackballed a lot of these artists, any artist that he had a problem with, any artist that, you know, stepped up to him, didn't agree with the way he was, you know, moving. He definitely got them blackballed. And I know because there's a lot of Diddy fans out there, they'll dismiss what Fred is saying to the rantings of a quote unquote lunatic and somebody who's bitter and this and that. But if you guys really follow Diddy and a lot of these hip hop people and people behind the scenes, you guys would know that back in 2019, Sauce Money came out and was blasting Diddy. You know what I'm saying? Um, he was trying to come out with the new album, and he's the one who wrote I'll Be Missing You. A lot of people don't know that. They think Diddy wrote it, but it was Sauce Money. And so Sauce Money was shorted money from Diddy, and when he tried to drop a new album and, you know, get back in the industry, he found out that he was being blackballed. And he talked about this a few years ago. So I definitely believe what Fred is saying because Diddy has been known to do this. Check this out. Losing out on close to 100000 because wow. of the lawsuit and because I had the majority of whatever else Sting wasn't, you know, whatever whatever was left on the table after Sting took the majority of everything. And uh, and so I, I short, you know, short story shorter, I was, you know, I, I was short close to 100,000. Never said nothing. Mm -hmm. Never talked about it. I'm thinking like, okay, well, this is the business then, you know, it's all a part of it. Still right. young in the game, don't know better, like, you know. So I ate that. Never said a word. Mm -hmm. Fast forward to currently where we are today and why I actually dropped the record was because I found out that I was there was a there was a ban on me from speaking on his platforms. You know, and, you know, my thing is this, if I did something to you to offend you, it was, I, I didn't recognize it, you know, and let's, you know, let me clear that up. So, you know, there's no misnomers. Right. You know, and, um, he, you know, just wasn't really receptive to clearing the air. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you, when, you know, when you, Ban somebody or blackball somebody that you know people like to say like that's 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 a cancer that spreads, right? You know because now you when when A when B finds out A doesn't deal with you, B's not going to deal with you, and when C finds out B and A's not dealing with you, they don't want to deal with you, and you know like that spreads, and right. it's not just you become a series of events, corporations. 
you have corporations that's involved in this situation. So, you know, like, I, now you're interfering with how I put food on the table for my family. Right. And that I can't stand for. Right. You know, so, it, you know, yeah, you shorted me some money, but I overlooked that for a very long time. It's been, what, 20 years? Yeah. I never said a word. But with this... Well, you 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 know, like I can't overlook that. Like enough is enough already. You know, like enough is enough. I don't know any man that would allow another man to implement or interfere with the way he feeds his family. You know, it's really messed up that he was able to do that. Now, I will say this. Can I blame Diddy for everything that Freddie P has gone through in life? No, and I'm not saying that and it would be unfair to do that because it's clearly evident from what Freddie went through, even in his childhood, that trauma was there before, okay? He was already going through things, already having to do dirt. You know, his mother was a single mom. There were no dads in the house and all that stuff. So that trauma was already there. But the problem is Diddy came in and exploited that trauma, you know? And it wasn't about the human being. It was about getting ratings and poking the bear, poking these kids and getting them to react. I mean, there were times in the house where a few of them, you know, threw hands or almost came to blows. I mean, yeah, it is. You ain't in the bed. Sarah in the yeah, bed. Yeah, yeah, but that's my wife. Let her y'all ain't, y'all ain't married. Let her talk. Let her talk. Let her talk. Sir. Just go and let her have it. 436, go let her have it. Come on, then let me have it. Somebody walk through the door. He's taking his chain off. So what you are you doing? Like, 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 you know, especially like during the second season, it got really bad. Um, so it, it's just really sad. But I think at this point, you know, what Freddie needs to do is definitely get some counseling, talk to people about, you know, those S thoughts, because um, we don't want to lose this young man, um, you know, to that. If it can be prevented, I hope his family and people who really care about him step up and allow him to speak and vent and, you know, step in because you can tell he's dealing with a lot of pain. But I also want him to understand as well that you don't need Diddy. You don't need making the band. You know, there's always ways to find success in other paths. And if you feel like you can't rap anymore because of everything that you went through and the trauma then leave that be and find your happiness in something else. Maybe it's not going to be in rapping. Maybe it can be in motivational speaking because the things that he was saying in that video was very powerful. And a lot of black men don't talk about their feelings because they think, oh, it makes them soft. And sometimes, you know, as a society, we don't allow black men to vent and say that I'm going through a lot and I can't handle this. And, you know, when he broke down crying, that was genuine pain. And like I always tell folks, there's never a test without a testimony. So maybe this is his testimony and he can use this as an opportunity to go out and speak to the youth, go out and speak to this generation of kids and let them know about, you know, the exportation that goes on in the industry. You know, so I definitely I don't know where Freddie's going to go from here, but I just pray for his mental health. I hope things get better for him. But I'm always going to be a fan. That brother is very talented. He's always been able to spit. You know, he always represented, you know, Liberty City, where he was from. And I liked all of the people from all the different episodes of the band, even the ones who didn't make it. You know, I had a special connection with a lot of them. Um you know, it's just sad when you really think about all of these kids that were basically treated like a commodity. It was basically a fucking, you know, factory ran by a madman. <laughs> and he learned that from Lou Pearlman, who was another madman who basically robbed Backstreet Boys and NSYNC and Pussycat Dolls and a bunch of other groups. Like Push a little more. Lou has just given us our record contracts. With this contract, we are tied up for the next 10 years of our life. Could end up awesome. It could end up I just need to really read that and have my lawyer read it to understand what it is that I'm getting into. So when you come back after this little break, 
You gotta have them signed. I don't know why these making of band shows were such a thing in like the early 2000s, but there were so many shows like this. And when you look back at it as an adult, all they were doing were, was literally exploiting young people. And I wouldn't be surprised if they start coming out with tea, how some of the young girls may have been sexually exploited because they always wanted them to be super scantily clad and, you know, show off their dance skills and be sultry in front of all these grownups. These shows were a trip when you go back and watch it with the dot eyes. But with that being said, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Let me know your thoughts on everything concerning um, the making of the bands. The different episodes, the different seasons. How do you feel about what Willie Taylor had to say? And then how do you guys feel about what Freddie P had to say as well? Because he's definitely going through it. So once again, y'all, thank y'all for tuning in and checking out this video. Let's get the discussion popping. Make sure you guys leave a comment. Check and make sure you're still subscribed because YouTube loves to unsubscribe people. Make sure you like the video and don't forget to share the video. And I'll talk to you guys later. Deuces.